All right, y'all, I would love to share a verse with you that has become one of my favorite verses in the world the last two years. And it's because of the story I shared with you about this idea of getting your hopes up. This is from Romans 15, 13. It says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Y'all, I love this verse so much. I have put it on the back of my planner. I have put it in multiple different locations. It, to me, is this foundational verse I just want to build my life on. Let's break it down for a second. May the God of hope. That's that reminder. Our God is a God of hope. Of course we should get our hopes up. Because why? Because our hope isn't in ourselves. It's not in our circumstances or our situation. Our hope is in our God, who is the God of hope. It tells us right here, he is the God of hope. So we can get our hopes up. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. I don't know if you're like me, but trusting God, I'm not always feeling full of joy, not always feeling at peace. Sometimes it feels like he drags me kicking and screaming. I am trying to control every detail, digging my fingernails into something. I'm desperately Googling information, trying to control the outcomes. I'm not necessarily full of peace and joy when I'm trusting God. But that's what I love about this verse. It reminds us that the God of hope will fill us with joy and peace as we trust in him. So that there's a result of this. It's not just for fun so we can be full of peace and joy. That's great. But there's more to that. So that you may overflow with hope. Overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, I don't know about you, but that's encouraging to me. You don't have to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You don't have to get really full of hope on your own and be a good Christian and bring it to God and show him what you've mustered up by yourself. It's saying here that the God of hope will fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him so that you actually might overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. What a gift that when we feel like we have nothing to give, when we feel like we are bringing crumbs to the table, we we are barely hanging on, our hope has been diminished, our heart has been broken, God is saying, I'll meet you there. Just like the woman whose story I shared with you a few minutes ago of she was bleeding for 12 years and she just reaches out and grabs the edge of his cloak. I can't imagine how discouraged she was when she showed up there. I can't imagine how little faith she probably felt like she had. But if I could just touch his cloak, if I can just grab the edge of his garment, I don't know where you are, but I want to remind you that you don't have to do it yourself. You don't have to be a good Christian, check all the boxes, do your Bible study every day for God to meet you where you are and fill you with hope. You and I have every reason to get our hopes up because our God is the God of hope. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can actually overflow with hope. I've got some journal questions for you to consider as you think about this and pray about how to apply it to your life. Your first one is this, and this one might be hard. How have you been guarding your heart from God? How have you been maybe even dishonest with yourself or with Him, trying to convince yourself you don't want that thing, trying to convince Him you don't really care about that? I don't really care about that outcome. I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. How have you been kidding yourself, trying to convince Him that you don't care about something that you do care deeply about? How have you been guarding your heart from God? Write down your answer. As I'm talking about this, I'm sure that there are some things coming to mind. There are some dreams that are creeping back in. You thought you had put them away and put a lock on it and threw away the key, but there they are again. Everything I'm saying is stirring something in you. What are those things? Your second question is just to write down those dreams. What are your dreams or desires that you're feeling right now? 
that are maybe scary or vulnerable, you feel selfish, you feel silly, you don't wanna get your hopes up, and even the idea of writing them down feels terrifying. I challenge you to do it. No one's gonna see it but you and God. You can trust Him with these dreams. You can trust Him with these desires. They are not silly and selfish. I promise you, He can handle them. He can handle you. What dreams and desires do you have right now? Write them down. And your third question is actually a challenge. I want you to write down a prayer. I want you to write down a prayer of trust and faith and hope and give those desires to God. I want you to bring them to Him with open hands. Write down a prayer of faith of what you want for those things, how you feel about those things, how you feel He feels about those things. Just write down a prayer, an honest, visceral, blunt, prayer to God about those dreams that you just wrote down. All right, I'd love to pray for us as we wrap up. God, it is comical that we think we could hide anything from you. As if we have this secret closet, this secret compartment of our heart and our mind that we can let you know about most things, but not that thing. That we can want certain things, but you wouldn't really like those things, and maybe you can't handle those things, and you might judge us for those things, kind of like we're worried other people will judge us for wanting those things. God, thank you that you know every part of us You know every thought we have before we think it, every dream we have before we even know it. God, thank you that you can handle those dreams, you can handle those desires, and you can handle us. God, I wanna pray right now for every single person that's listening to this, and there is something stirring in their heart. Their chest is tight. They feel butterflies in their stomach. They can't believe they feel this way. And they're immediately going into fight mode to fight against those desires, to suppress them, push them down, block them out. They told themselves they wouldn't think about that ever again. They'd given up on that. They don't want to get their hopes up. They don't want to be let down. They've just got to guard their heart. God, right now, I pray that you would break it open. I pray that you would set them free of the fear and the bondage of trying to suppress those dreams and desires. God, I pray that you would breathe life on them, that you would fan that flame, and then give them the courage, the joy and the peace to trust in you with those dreams and desires that they may overflow with hope. In Jesus' name, amen.